glimpsing into the future live. This is Rackspace's continuing coverage of TechCrunch Disrupt 2013. Now here's Robert Skoll. Hey, I'm Robert Scoble, and we're here at TechCrunch uh, Disrupt 2013. And we've, we've decided to focus our Rackspace Studio on uh, Google Glass and wearables and talk about where the future is going. One of these uh, companies that really excited me was CrowdOptic because they're studying where are we looking and they're trying to figure out what to do with that. So we're going to get into that right now. So who are you? Thanks, Robert. I'm, uh, Look at me. Uh, thanks, Robert. I'm John Fisher. I uh, lead CrowdOptic, and uh, context is important. I, I've been in it for uh, almost 20 years, making a living anonymously, mostly white-label uh, software. But uh, uh, if you take the time to look at it closely, it's uh, pretty cool. Yep. And who are you? I'm Austin Marcus. I'm a software engineer working for John. Very cool. So what is, what is it that you're trying to do with your company? Well, we've been laying the tall grass for a couple of years in production on phones because that's what was available. And so enterprises are hiring us to leverage mobile to understand where consumers are aiming phones and what their tendencies are and how they're seeing the world. But now that glass is here, we can do some pretty remarkable uh, stuff. I uh, have a pretty interesting use case that uh, we can talk to in sports where, for example, Stanford basketball is beta testing an application. Imagine putting glass on a defense, on all the defenders, and running an offense. And imagine being able to see uh, what the defenders are reacting to in real time. And so what CrowdOptic does is it's a real-time stream of GPS, compass, and triangulation algorithms to network the glasses, to network where the glasses are looking in common. So this is, this is the first consumer electronics gadget that knows where I'm aimed, so it's, the sensors are tracking where I'm aiming my head, yep. and it, where my eyes are going, yep. which are two separate uh, things. But we don't really have an API yet for that. So are you going in at the hacky level, in the Android level, to go into the uh, actual sensor that's on this thing? I'm going in at the uninvited uh, friend of the, of the party level, and uh, we're on board, but uh, we can download for any glass unit. And yes, we're very excited about the APIs when they're uh, available. And uh, we study the, the sensor streams um, in, in real time. And yes, we can understand where the, the head is tilted, where the sensors are looking, and we are leaving the uh, eye movement piece of it to uh, Google and uh, the other, other We guys. should sort of demo this so people can get a sense of what it does. First of all, before Google Glass on mobile, you were able to do a lot of this just by looking at what? The compass in the phone? Or what were you looking at to get the heading? to know where I was aiming my phone. Sure, I'll demo it in a minute. It's the same sensor data. So same GPS and compass data creates a line of sight on a, on a dashboard or in any application that we're bolting onto. And then the, the triangulation algorithms understand the phones. So crowds of large people, if they're taking pictures or videos, uh, if they're doing something contextually that the enterprise wants to understand beyond location, which is one of the things we came here to say. We think location is great, but we think focus is better, and we think the understanding, especially with glass, of things based on location, respectfully, is, is almost like bolting a phone to your head because you already have that. Now you want to understand context based on pe where people are looking. So if you want to see it for yeah. a second. Let's, um, uh, let's get it, my camera going here. Yeah. So my, uh, I think he has this up on the screen, right? And then. Uh, my so what are we seeing? What, show me, tell me what's on the table here. Sure, my trusted colleague has two uh, uh, instances of our application on mobile phones. You can see how they're aimed. They're aimed at the same thing. Here's the camera view, and they're creating a triangulation. And what the application is showing is that they're aiming at the same thing about 75 meters away at the machine level. Yeah. So if you create GPS on each phone, you create a compass, which is a line of sight, which equals a, a vector that you can see on the on the dashboard, and here it is. By the way, can I tell you how long it took us to get that steady? We're indoors, it's a continuous stream, we're hitting the server once per second, we can do it once per one-tenth of a second uh, if, if we wanted to. Yeah. And you can see where it's, uh, uh, the con contextually where the phones are aimed. Yeah. Now, if I put on Google Glass and I fire this up, you should see uh, another line of sight form. It's the exact same application uh, but this time on another form factor, which yep. is Google Glass. Do you see me? Yep. And now do you see me moving my head, which is the 
line of sight that's changing, just so folks can understand that that's working. Yeah, a little bit, but it's a, uh, it's a little jittery. You know, it's early days, right? Uh, early days of uh, Crowd Optic or Google Glass. Google that Glass. We may have to determine. Uh, uh, just kidding. Just kidding, guys. So <laughs> you can uh, you can see though it's forming clusters based on where I'm moving the glass unit. Right. And we think that's the ball game. The understanding of where two through n glass units are aimed, we think, is going to change sports and entertainment and retail and you name it. So this this knows where you're aiming because you're wearing it. Correct. Well. And also, there's a sensor that really is pretty accurate on knowing that you're you're aiming this way. Where the the sensor in the in the phone is jittery because you're you're not really it, it, it's not reliable sensor data. Well, I, the sensor data we think is not so reliable across the board. Agree, but we smooth it. We have algorithms to take into account different things. Granted, we're better on the phones. Let, let's uh, admit that than we are in glass. We've only been on glass for a few months, but we're working on it. And it's not only the context to understand the stream and to steady that, but understand that you may be looking at an event that's traveling and it's the same event. Yeah. That's very difficult to do. The America's Cup is right outside our windows these days, and the understanding that the glass users are looking at the same boat moving over the water versus creating a distinct event each time. That's tough to do at the machine level, which we think we perfect. How many people, let's say a million people have these Google Glasses, can you, can you uh, deal with like 10,000 people at a football stadium all giving this kind of data and can you mix that kind of data in real time like that? Yeah, we can and it's also very difficult to do. It's taken us a long time to be able to scale with the sophisticated cluster detection that this is for that many concurrent users. So in a past life we built context for the largest banking systems in this country and you'd get maybe 250 concurrent users per second and that was tough here to get a thousand two thousand concurrent users per second by definition large crowds looking at the same thing is incredibly tough which we were able to work out uh, as of a year ago so let's talk about some of the use cases for this stuff but you know let's say shopping what would you guys do with shopping you know let's say you have a hundred people at a shopping mall with Google Glass on and with the crowd optics app on it. What, what can you do for the shopper? Well, L'Oreal is a customer and they recently hired us to do something a bit Star Trekian. and there was a million uh, man uh, festival, an art festival, and they wanted to, to bring the art festival outdoors so you could use your phones to see the art and then they studied where people are aiming their phones and they made that into its own art. So if we take L'Oreal indoors uh, on glass, we can show them users' uh, uh, exact path to purchase. Imagine taking this to Las Vegas and you can see how 100 people navigate the casino and depending on a variety of attributes then make their way to a L'Oreal you know, boutique. All that's coming where you have the context not just where the user is, but where the user is uh, looking. So you're, you're going to be able to build a contextual database based on how they go through the mall. That's, so shopping analytics is going to be a big deal. Yeah. Are you going to be able to do something live in the Google Glass for the shopper? Are you going to, what, what happens when you get 100 people all aimed at different things and can that feedback directly into the glass in some way? Well, yeah, we just partnered with uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon to design uh, what we're calling breadcrumbing, where if you know contextually where people are aimed as they're making their way through an environment, even indoors, we think that's a new type of mapping. So my daughter had her uh, 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 festival to go to just a few days ago. I mapped the GPS on the car, I mapped the GPS on the phone, it tells me to go in different directions, and I have to acclimate from a 3D to a 2D. I would rather have in the viewer understanding of where my wife is with her and how she's seeing the world, and then I can just follow her breadcrumbing into that. You take 100 people, did you make a wrong turn? Uh, chances are one of those people did. Are you trying to find a bathroom in a stadium? A thousand people also are. And the thing about glass that I don't think is, is reported enough is it's not about exploration, at least to me, it's about speed. So if I can, via contextual queuing, make you much faster based on the collective analytics and experiences of other people, we think that's the ball game. Because you put these things on to be faster, not to find your way uh, through a library better. What, what other use cases do you think? You talked about sports where you can analyze all the players and where they're looking in real time or where they're heading, and that'll give you a better, like, uh, uh, chart of where the players are on the field and where they're going. 
what, what else do you think you're going to do with sports? Well, we're gearing up to announce one of the largest uh, stadiums uh, in the country where they'll be hiring us to use the tools available, that's mobile and soon glass, to figure out where consumers are literally looking in these new digital stadiums. And why do you think, uh, you know, the NFL, for example, has mandated Wi-Fi in every stadium, or the 49ers have just announced a solution where all 65,000 users concurrently will be able to log in because of the demands of consumers using their phones and soon, soon wearable. And if you want to really provide for uh, cutting edge experiences for consumers, again, know where they're looking, not just that they're already in the stadium. Yeah. Also for real time broadcasting, if you want to put something on a shared screen for football, you know, Justin Bieber may be piped in from Twitter, but it, he may not be relevant because he's in Canada and not at the game. Why not pipe in guys who have really been authenticated as eyewitness content? Not that they're in the bathroom, which is the same location context, but that they're actually just witnessed that. That's uh, something I'd be very interested in seeing at home, and that's something I would love to participate in at $200 per ticket. Yeah. What else should we talk about in, in this world? Um, how protectable is this uh, kind of new uh, algorithm? You know, because I'm sure other people are, Google I'm sure is thinking about, oh, this is an aiming device that's going to open up new use cases, new things, new, you know, new, new ways to study people, new ways to interact with people. Yeah, you know, we just got the patent on this stuff. Can you believe that? Something as fundamental, we think, as two through end devices, phones, uh, glasses, watches for that matter, all anything that is a device that has these attributes triangulating in this, in this manner. We're awful proud of that. Not to participate in this draconian debate that's going on about should there be patents or not, but you work hard and you defend something as an anonymous startup, which is where I've spent my whole life, and you're out front enough to then really partner with some defensible technology with the best out there. And so we were honored to be invited into the GLASS program, and we think we're making use of it, but we also think we're carving out our own uh, territory in it by definition. Yeah. No, it's going to be exciting. How are you guys funded at this point? Tell me about the company you're building. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank uh, participated pre-revenue. You know, we've been there for 20 years and all of our other ventures. People uh, don't actually hug their banks publicly enough these days, so I'll be one. Uh, we have uh, the Band of Angels, been very helpful with their network, uh, uh, notable funds. Notable uh, angel uh, investors, uh, Ray Lane, who is, uh, I think, the best enterprise guy in the world. Um, is Former of Elson, or uh, Oracle, right? At, at Oracle, the guy uh, uh, built Oracle for 10 years and got to know every enterprise uh, CTO and, 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 and CEO on earth. And let me tell you, uh, when you do what I do and the largest enterprises are looking to trust you, uh, guys like that are invaluable vouching for the quality of, of the things that you build. Uh, so he's uh, uh, an angel investor and folks like that. Uh, I certainly put, uh, uh, I'm long time in, in money, uh, especially uh, uh, with, with stuff like this that we really not only believe is, is important, but has a place in this whole wearable piece. And again, that's after two years of production when people are asking us, why are people aiming their phones? And we had to say, well, they're aiming to take pictures and videos, but then also enterprises are hiring us to have them engage in these campaigns so they can actually see that context. Yeah. Well, it's going to be really interesting to see what you, where things go in the future because uh, glass is really keying me in on the aiming of things. We've already seen lots of apps like HomeSap where you aim your phone and it actually uses where you're scanning and where you're aiming to pull up information. But you're doing it in real time with multiple streams. That's sort of really interesting. Yeah, we appreciate it, and you uh, uh, know this as well as uh, any of us. You're out there seeing everything. We really appreciate a hardcore context guy uh, looking at this. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank um, you. By the way, where do we uh, find more information on your company? At uh, crowdoptic.com. Uh, right. Crowdoptic. Crowdoptic. Singular.com. So uh, we're going to be doing several of these interviews all day long. Uh, you can watch them either live as I tweet them, or uh, you can watch them recorded later on. Uh, on YouTube. Uh, thanks for joining us from TechCrunch Disrupt 2013. Seeing into the future live. Rackspace's continuous coverage of TechCrunch Disrupt 2013 will continue in a moment. You've got code to write. Let us manage the rest. Find out more at rackspace.com.